يا ايها الذين امنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاه ان الله مع الصابرين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين my beloved brothers and sisters comfort in times of crisis it is important for us to go through the pages of the Quran, look at revelation, and take a look at how the Almighty, the owner of comfort, the owner of contentment, has actually guided us to achieving that comfort and that contentment within the Quran. So the opening verse, if we were to look at it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم If you notice the term بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم some scholars consider it a part of surah al-Fatiha which is the opening chapter of the Quran, whereas others, the majority, say that it is not a part of it, but it is to be recited, and anything of importance that we begin or start, we should start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the meaning of which is in the name of Allah. So in the name of Allah we commence. When we start anything in the name of Allah, automatically we have a sense of comfort, subhanallah. Start anything in the name of Allah, automatically we have a sense of comfort. Then Allah chooses two of His qualities that He wanted to be repeated again and again. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carefully selected those qualities that depict the height of comfort. What are these qualities? They are the qualities of mercy. A mercy that is common for all the creatures of the Creator. And the second quality is a mercy that is specialized. A specialized mercy for those who have developed the correct relationship with that Maker. So He says to us, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most merciful. Both of these names are extracted from the quality of mercy. So if you look at Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim itself and think about it, Allah could have chosen any other qualities to actually have there because obviously He has so many names and qualities, but He chose the qualities of mercy, two types of mercy. Usually we say in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. So if Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is considered a part of Surah Al-Fatiha, as some of the scholars say, then these qualities have been repeated. And look at what Allah says. He says, Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. That too is a very, very interesting choice and divine wisdom of Allah is in play. It's Allah's choice. It's His word. He says, all praise is due to Allah. That's how he chose to start the Quran, with the praise of Allah. When you praise Allah, you achieve a lot of comfort, my brothers, my sisters. Those whose tongues are moist in the remembrance of Allah, declaring His praise and His greatness, they will never go wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, He is the Lord, the Lord of the worlds. The worlds here meaning entire creation from the beginning right up to the end. Everything that was made by Allah, it is included in this term, the worlds, if we were to look at the broadest meaning of the term. So, who is the Lord of the worlds? Again, he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful. That is amazing because Twice we've already heard the most beneficent, the most merciful, and we've only started the Qur'an. Another very interesting factor is, in our five daily prayers, we are told to repeat this surah in every unit of prayer. So either we hear it or read it, but at the same time we know it is repeated so much in 
salah or in the five daily prayers. We have to say, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the most beneficent, the most merciful. He could have chosen any other qualities, but he decided that that would be the quality that he wants to be repeated the most. Hence, we achieve comfort in times of crisis. My brothers and sisters, with Allah on your side, nothing do you need to ever worry about. And if Allah is not on your side, then even that which appears positive, you need to be concerned. So let's take a look at what Allah says immediately after that. He says, Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment. This is by far going to be the biggest day for all of us, the day of judgment. The day when people will be so worried, when people will be really concerned about how they're going to fare on that day. What is it that will help you? What will give you the comfort on that day of major crisis? Well, Allah preceded this by those qualities, the most merciful, the most beneficent, the most forgiving, etc. So it's as though he is telling you, look, I am the most beneficent, the most merciful, and I am the owner of the day of judgment. So you just need to prepare for the day of judgment, prepare well, seek a lot of forgiveness, have hope in the mercy of Allah. While we're all concerned about the day of judgment, and really there is a factor of fear, but at the same time, the hope should override that. If you have been seeking the forgiveness of Allah, you have nothing to worry about. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us to seek the forgiveness of the most merciful, the most forgiving, up to 100 times a day and beyond. And he did it himself. So subhanAllah, look at what Allah is saying. So here I have my own creator telling me, look, I am the creator, all praise is due to me. I am the most merciful, the most forgiving. I am also the owner of the day of judgment. And I want you to know the most important thing that you could ever achieve. What is it? Well, it's in the form of a supplication that comes immediately after that. I want to succeed on the day of judgment. I want comfort in times of crisis, more so on that particular day of judgment. What do I need the most? Here goes. <laughs> Guide us to the straight path. If you have the guidance, you don't need anything else. And if you have everything else and not the guidance, you actually have nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, guide us to the straight path. But just before that, he makes mention of something very important. <laughs> because he is the owner of the day of judgment, he wants you to worship him alone and to ask from him alone. So we say, you alone, we worship you alone, we ask for help. Amazing. And thereafter, guide us to the straight path. It's the first help that I need. The first help that I need is the guidance to the straight path. So if I am guided to the straight path, I worship Allah alone. I seek from Him alone and I believe in His mercy and I know He is the owner of the day of judgment and I keep seeking forgiveness and I try to follow the example of those who brought this revelation to us, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I need not fear. Everything that happens, happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is amazing. And this is why when Allah says the path of those whom you, has, you have favored and not the path of those who have earned your anger or gone astray, He's simply describing those who have lost. You could have anything, but if you are astray, you've lost. You could have anything, but if you've earned the anger of Allah, you've lost. What do we want? The mercy of Allah. Never let shaitan overtake you by making you think that you are too far from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at the next surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, which is surah number two of the Quran, he starts off with Alif Lam Alif Lam Mim, the meaning of which nobody knows besides Allah. ذلك الكتاب, this book, no doubt, in it there is guidance for those who have taqwa, who are the muttaqeen. Indeed, 
This book, no doubt, has guidance in it for those who have taqwa. So who has taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this so beautifully by saying that taqwa, actually the people who have it are those who believe in the unseen. They establish their prayer and they spend from what we have given them. So when Allah's given you something, you share it. You establish your prayer. These are simple ways of achieving comfort in times of crisis. You've got to be from the muttaqin. So let me spend a moment explaining the term muttaqin. I translate it very simply as developing the correct relationship with Allah. So Allah says guidance for those who have developed the correct relationship with Allah, those who love him enough to stay away from the prohibitions and who fear his anger or who fear uh, getting into the bad books or the wrong side. And so they fear the punishment as well, which is there, but out of the love of Allah. When you love someone so much, you don't want to anger them or you don't want them to be upset with you. So those are the ones who have developed taqwa. They are conscious in everything they do of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, in this book, there is guidance for those who have developed the correct relationship with Allah because there are others who will read this book cover to cover. It doesn't even move them. It hasn't changed them. It did not teach them a thing. They didn't change in any way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to us. We need to know. Let's seek the help of Allah. Let's pray. And let's spend from that which Allah has given us. And let's believe in Allah. And inshallah, we will be able to attain beautiful comfort during every difficulty. And that comfort will be given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who have faith and conviction in the last day. They know, they believe in the last day. May Allah grant every one of us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين